We also have some rules that are helpful for doing addition and subtraction when negatives are involved. Here you have to consider two aspects to each problem. First, you need to determine what sign your answer will have. Then you have to determine what to do with the digits. First, if the signs are the same, your answer will always have the same sign. And you'll add the digits. You add the digits because if you have two positive values combined, you're just going to get more positive. If you have two negatives combined, you'll just get more negative. If the signs are different, your answer takes its sign from whichever number is bigger. Now, obviously positive numbers are always greater than negatives, but here we're just looking at their values, ignoring the signs. Once we know which sign to use, we have to find the difference of the numbers, or subtract the digits. We do this because since we have a combination of positive and negative values being combined, some are going to cancel each other out to zero. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of how to use these rules. Our first example is negative 13 minus 8. We need to see these numbers as both being negative, so our answer will also be negative. We can consider them as both negative because subtraction is the same thing as adding the negative. Now that we know the sign of our answer, since the signs are the same, we need to add the digits. 13 plus 8 is 21, so now we know our answer is negative 21. One way we can visualize this is to use disks like these. Each red disk is a negative 1, each blue disk is a positive 1, and when you combine red and blue, you get purple, which represents negative 1 plus 1, which equals 0. Using this, we can see the problem as 13 red disks, or negative ones, combined with 8 negative ones. Nothing here cancels out, so we can just count up all the disks and see that we have 21 negative ones. So our answer is negative 21, like we said.